Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to do something a little bit different. I just want to share with you my journey um, and my experience going essential oil free. I get a lot of questions about this. You know, why did I choose to do this? Are essential oils bad? Should you stop using essential oils? And really, I can't make that decision for anybody, but what I can do is share my experience. And my hope is that by sharing my experience, if any part of what I say in today's video resonates with you, it seems like it's also happening to you too. That sounds familiar. I just hope that by sharing my experience, I can kind of help enlighten and empower those who maybe are silently suffering from essential oil sensitization to um, make a change in their skincare. And if not, then it's just a really fun story time. So give the video a big thumbs up. You know the drill and let's get started. Okay, so let me just start off with the fact that there's definitely been an uptick in essential oil use in K-Beauty. I'm not exactly sure where it started, but what I can tell you is when I first got into K-Beauty, which was almost eight years ago now, you know, back in 2012, there wasn't really essential oils being used in K-Beauty products. I'm not saying that it never was used, but it was very rare. And in fact, I look back at that time and I look back at all those products that I used um, prior to like the current era, if you will. And like all of the products I used had no essential oils in it whatsoever. So really, I mean, when I first started in K-Beauty, it was a non-issue and it wasn't even something I was aware of because it just wasn't in my products. If I had to like kind of guesstimate, I think probably around the 2016, 2017 era is when essential oils started to um, get used more often. And really we can link that back to the backlash against artificial fragrance, right? A lot of people um, know that artificial fragrance can cause problems problems for sensitive skin and there's just been generally speaking a movement against artificial anything in the last decade truly so it kind of got caught up in that whole natural is better kind of deal we're not going to go into that <laughs> that is a whole nother subject about you know is natural better no it's not there's almost like more problems with essential oils than there are benefits to having them in a product and the benefit that I the only benefit that I can seem to find with these things is the fact that it makes it smell good I'd rather have my skincare smell like an old shoe than to have essential oils now let me share with you my story because I was not using any essential oil in my routine until about the end of 2017 the beginning of 2018 because that's when I started to bring in a bunch of Claire's products into my routine I remember I used the Claire's vitamin C um, serum as well as the soothing serum and the vitamin E mask. I introduced those all together around the same time and nothing happened. <laughs> I got great results from the mask and the vitamin C serum. I really, really loved those products. They did a lot for my skin. That was the beginning of introducing essential oils into my skincare routine. Fast forward then to the fall of 2018 and I started to feel sensations on my skin. I started to feel a lot of extra dehydration on my skin. I, I started to feel a lot of irritation on my skin. My skin just started to behave poorly. You know what I mean? Like I was getting more clogged pores, some more um, inflamed pimples. It was just like unhappy. You know when you just know that your skin's just not happy, it's just not in a good state. That's what was happening to my skin around that time. I was starting to feel that with my skin. Then fast forward like a month later and I start to use the Claire's Supple Preparation Original Toner. Now this is the very first uh, product that opened my eyes to essential oils because this was a really great experiment. I used the original toner, which does contain essential oils. And within a few days, I did get some irritation on my skin. I was getting a lot of random whiteheads on my skin. I took the toner out of my routine, whiteheads went away, put the toner back into my routine, whiteheads came back. Like, okay, something's going on here. I only tested it the second time on the right side of my face, only. After about three days, I was starting to get the whiteheads on my face one side of my face only. I got the opportunity to try the unscented version. And if you look at the ingredients side by side, the only difference is no essential oils in the unscented and essential oils in the scented. So there's really not a difference there. 
Use the unscented supple preparation toner and no irritation, no whiteheads. Everything was a okay. This was a great example for, for my personal like skin knowledge, right? To know that I had this reaction to a product that the only difference between the two was the essential oils. That got my brain ticking. I don't know if it's just like being naive or what. I was just like, it must have something to just do with that particular product or those particular essential oils because I've used all these other essential oils for the last almost year and nothing has happened. So it must be that product. This is one of the issues about essential oils and I'll get into this further in just a little bit, but they are so freaking tricky and they don't behave like any other ingredient. And that's why I'm so passionate about kind of like sharing my experience because it is important to understand that you're dealing with a completely different beast when it comes to essential oils than any other ingredient you've encountered before. This was around the time that I started to deal with a damaged moisture barrier. And at the time, I really thought that maybe I had just gone in too hard with exfoliating products. And that is probably one of the contributing factors, but I can't deny that one of the other contributing factors was probably the escalation of essential oil usage in my skincare routine from the entire year. So when I was researching how to heal my moisture barrier and kind of doing a lot of trial and error, a lot of the advice that I was coming across online was to avoid essential oils with a damaged moisture barrier because essential oils uh, do contain irritating um, components in them. Whether they irritate healthy skin that's up for, you know, individual skin by skin basis, right? But when you have a damaged moisture barrier, your skin's defenses are basically gone. And that means that those potentially irritating compounds, while they may not have irritated your healthy skin, can actually absorb in deeper to the skin. And that's when they start to cause the irritation because they were never meant to go so far. But when they do, they are almost a surefire bet to cause problems on the skin. So the seed was planted. You know, the idea that essential oils can wreak havoc on the skin and could be an ingredient to avoid, that seed was in my mind, that suspicion was there. And even though I had healed my moisture barrier, you know, I was still going through odd bouts of sensitivity, odd bouts of dehydration, irritation on my skin. Just you know when your skin is just not doing well, you know, it's just not responding well to products, it's not looking that great, maybe you're getting a lot of weird like breakouts, you know, I don't really get a lot of acne when I get a pimple, it's kind of an occasion, you know, there's usually a, a, a source, there's usually a cause, but I was getting such really bad, deep pimples that uh, would pop but then would bleed terribly you know what i mean like this is not what my skin is like at all but i was getting the, these horrible um, pimples on my skin i was going through terrible dehydration my skin was just so angry and it just felt so delicate and sensitive and while it seemed like a weak moisture barrier it was also different at the same time having gone just through that it felt different. I just still naively thought that it wasn't the essential oils. And why did I think that? Let me be real with you. It's simply down to the fact that I would use a product with essential oils and nothing would happen. At least not that I knew of. Do you know what I mean? The thing we need to be aware of with essential oils when we're trying to determine if they bother our skin, we cannot treat these like the other ingredients that have that potential to bother our skin, like say a chemical exfoliation or a retinol, because what do you do with those types of products that you think, okay, maybe this might be too much for my skin, maybe it won't be. What do we do? We put them into testing periods, right? Usually what, like two, three weeks, we start a new product, and in those first two to three weeks, we watch that product like a hawk, right? If that product causes pimples, irritation, dryness, dehydration, we link it back to that new product that we added into our routine because that is clearly the source of the problem, that new product. But if it passes that three week mark, good to go, right? Like there's definitely not gonna be any irritation happening with this product. Not so with the essential oils. They are a horse of a different color. And one of the biggest things that I hope to impart to you from this video is that they need to be considered in a very different way because essential oils don't always behave that way. They don't always irritate you in the first two, three weeks of use. And even though we've been trained to think this way forever, this is not how we can assess issues with essential oils. 
So yes, I tried the Claire's product and I got an, Im an immediate, right? Irritation from it, all those white heads. But I tried a whole bunch of other essential oil products that did not give me that kind of irritation or that kind of reaction on my skin that I could link back to a specific product or to a specific essential oil. So it's a very confusing thing for, for people to be able to pinpoint this issue because essential oils can, yeah, they can bother you immediately they can bother you two months down the road. They can bother you a year later. For me personally, I did not start to experience essential oil like sensitization and ir ir irritation on my skin until seven months in, eight months, nine months, nearly a year, right? That it took for those symptoms, the early symptoms to start showing on my skin. That's a really long time, right? And so, so often it's not one essential oil or one product, but it's the continuous use that breaks down our skin's defenses over time. Now, the decision to go essential oil free, even just temporarily, that was not a hard decision to make necessarily, but um, while I would say it wasn't a hard decision to execute, I'd say it wasn't a quick decision to execute. It took me a couple of months to um, find the products and, and um, find the product replacements. Sunscreen was my last product hold out. I was just having so, so many difficulties finding an essential oil-free sunscreen. I finally accomplished that in August of 2019. And so I was finally essential oil-free. And let me tell you what an interesting experiment because by a week and a half to two weeks later, my skin was resilient. It was strong. It was healthy. It was hydrated. It did not feel any ounce of sensitivity. It just felt so healthy for the first time in over a year. I cannot stress how important that feeling on my skin was and how much that solidified to me that the choice to clear the essential oils out of my routine was the right choice for me. And that's why I'm so passionate about sharing essential oil-free products because regaining back my skin's strength and health was everything because honestly healthy skin is everything you know i preach so much about the moisture barrier because that's intimately linked to your skin's health once your skin is healthy you experience less pimples you experience brighter clearer skin you experience just like your skin glows from within you know what i mean people can see it on your face more than any other skincare product can ever do for you healthy skin will serve you so, so much. The other thing that I kind of just want to briefly touch on is the fact that, you know, a lot of people will say, well, essential oils are safe to be used in certain concentrations, and that is what skincare products are going to be formulated to. The unfortunate part about that sort of line of thinking, while it is technically true, I think it's like less than 1% that they can be formulated with in, in order to be safe. The problem is with us <laughs> skincare layerers, right? We love to pack on the layers of products and that's when we start to come into the issue of essential oil toners, essences, serums, moisturizers, and sunscreens all in the same routine. That's when it starts to overload the skin and we're most likely going over that one percentage, right? When we're starting to layer all the products on. So it's not a question of does bergamot oil bother my skin? It's more of a question of, you know, how much can my skin take? You know, how many essential oil laden products can my skin take? If I'm using it in my cleanser and in my essence and in my serum and in my sunscreen, is it too much? So it's super complicated topic, right? I mean, I think part of the reason I hadn't made this video sooner is just because even sharing my story, I know there's so many twists and turns and linking those vague kind of background symptoms to essential oil sensitivity. It's definitely not an easy thing to do. And I know so many people are kind of silently suffering because those symptoms are vague. They are not easy to pinpoint. And I think a lot more people are kind of coming out and speaking about essential oils, but there's not a lot of content out there about you know, why people choose to avoid them or what has personally happened on your skin um, to prove to you that maybe you are sensitive to essential oils because as I said, they're a horse of a different color. You can't just use a product with essential oils and assume that if you pass that three week testing period that you're a-okay with them. That's just not the case. It took, it took me nearly a year 
almost an entire year to start to have symptoms of essential oil sensitivity. Everybody's skin is going to react differently. You're not necessarily going to have the exact same experience as me, but really it is a vague kind of thing that starts to happen on your skin slowly over time. And we need to be aware of that. There's a lot of research out there that supports uh, why you shouldn't use them in skincare. There's a lot of uh, research out there that supports that they're fine to use in skincare, that they're, they're totally safe, right? Um, and there's a lot of opinions out there too, and it's very heated. Pro essential oils, you know, against essential oils, that's not what this video is. This video is merely sharing an experience um, because I'm not really here to tell you what to do. All I can do is share what I've done and what's worked for me. I had some fear around this whole essential oil issue when I first decided to, to clear them out of my routine. Not because I didn't think it was going to work. I actually, I obviously had a very strong hunch that this was the issue um, happening on my skin and I was right because my skin got better so quickly and it's just been so good since then. But I was afraid about being super public about it because I felt as somebody who shows up twice weekly on YouTube and on a blog and on Instagram to review skincare products that I was limiting myself. It's starting to become really hard to find anything that doesn't have essential freaking oils in it with these new K-Beauty releases and I'm getting sick of it. Wow, I was not planning this rant, you guys. That's kind of scary. Like, am I gonna run out of things to review? Am, am, am I gonna, is my content gonna, you know, not be good because I can't try all the latest releases because essential oils are being used so heavily in K-Beauty right now? I was honestly kind of scared, but I had to follow my gut instinct, what was right for my skin, and honestly, what I'm doing with my skin is what I'm gonna share on my channel. But what I wanna leave you with is, yes, I had that fear, and I know many of you have that fear too, that you're gonna be limited for choices if you eliminate this huge ingredient category. And what I can tell you is, you're not. You're not. I'm still here. I still have content. I still have tons of new products to talk about every single week, right? Uh, I have so many resources of reviews on essential oil-free products for you to get started with as well. And I just want to let you know that yes, you may spend some extra time combing through ingredients lists. There have been many a time that I've sat on YesStyle frustrated for three hours trying to find a cleanser with five different tabs open trying to research ingredients. Yes, it has happened, but I've never felt like I didn't have a choice or this was my only choice. Sometimes it takes a little extra time. It takes a little extra effort to discover, right? Because when you scratch the surface of K-Beauty, you'll come up with a lot of essential oils. If you dive a little bit deeper, you'll find a whole wide world of fragrance-free products for you to, to try and to use. So if you are thinking about making that decision for yourself, but you're feeling a little scared, about limiting yourself, just know that it's really not limiting once you actually get in there. And um, I'm gonna help you out as much as I possibly can with product recommendations. So I hope that video was helpful for you guys. You know, I really do believe in the power of sharing experiences because you can look at research papers until you're blue in the face and it won't make one ounce of difference. But hearing it from somebody's own experience can really really help. And you know, skincare is super individual. So you know, what works for me may not work for you. That's kind of the age old saying. And it's so true. It's a very individual journey. But collecting all these experiences and learning from them, I really think just accelerates our growth on our skincare journey. So I do hope that it helped. And I'm curious to know how you guys felt about the format of this video. You know, do you guys like kind of story time type of videos? Because I'm happy to, to do more for you if you're interested in this. So let me know in the comment box below and let me know your feelings about essential oils, good or bad, I've got your back. This is a safe space. So let me know what you guys think about essential oils. If the video did help you and you're not subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. I release two new K-Beauty Focus videos every single week. Don't forget to turn on notifications so you don't miss out on those two new videos every single week. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. I can't wait to see you in the next video and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.